love can swim oceans No matter how tall or wide Love is a refuge Love is a savior And you've got it all inside It can make you do crazy things Cause love will erase the fear Well, good morning <laughs> and Shabbat Shalom. I want to say a, a special thank you uh, to Henry Thrun, uh, who helped uh, to put together uh, that presentation. Uh, and I want to thank uh, my friend Scott Crepain, uh, who uh, gave us permission to use his song, What If, uh, behind that. Uh, for those of you uh, who may not know me, my name is Jason Berry. Uh, I am the executive director uh, of Anoka Community Mission. Uh, we are a Christ-centered, social needs nonprofit uh, that meets the essential needs of families with small children. Uh, we have four key programs that we do at the mission. Little Blessings of Anoka is our child care center. Uh, Tables of Blessing Community Cafe is our community cafeteria where we feed the kids and the families that we serve Monday through Friday uh, for free. Uh, and we have uh, two material aid distribution programs. One is called Samuel's Closet, uh, which is kind of like a, a mini once upon a child. Uh, individuals donate clothing and shoes and toys and housewares and uh, even uh, 
somewhat deceased vacuums. Uh, we're kind of thinking about a Lazarus kind of vacuum ministry. Um, we have volunteers that actually repair the vacuum cleaners and then we distribute those using a point system. Uh, the families that go shopping have points to spend in different categories uh, in that program, as well as uh, our, our food and hygiene distribution program called Joseph's Pantry, uh, which also uses a point system. Now, we believe that it's important to show respect to civil authority. We pray for those who are in authority in our government. We uh, pay uh, taxes um, in the sense of the mission is like a sustainable ministry model. So we have a number of programs that help us raise funds to be able to take care of those four key social needs programs. So uh, many of you have seen our piggy banks and our coins for kids program. We collect aluminum cans. We collect recyclable textiles. We collect used athletic equipment. We collect used books and DVDs and used Legos. And some of those items that come in are tax uh, so we pay sales tax on that. So we render unto Caesar what is Caesar's when we sell the uh, athletic equipment to play it against sports. But ultimately, we believe that uh, Yeshua can do better than the government. Okay. Uh, we've seen some amazing things happen in the past year, and we had the opportunity to gather together uh, and have a, a wonderful dessert benefit event that we call Tis So Sweet. Uh, it was uh, last Sunday, uh, one of our partner churches hosted it, and we actually raised funds to help power all of the refrigerators and the freezers that you saw in our food distribution programs. Uh, many of you may remember last year when uh, I was speaking, giving a ministry update, that we were praying that God would provide more refrigerators and freezers at the mission so that we could store food and distribute more food, both through our lobby and we were actually praying for the launch of Joseph's Pantry. And look at what God did. Yeah, praise God. We... We not only needed freezer chests, but because we are overseen by a Department of Human Services, because we run a child care center in the Department of Health to make the kitchen safe and everything, we needed commercial grade freezer chests and refrigerators. And the Lord moved by prompting the hearts of a couple of Aldi store managers who had stores getting remodeled in the area. And do you remember the pictures of those big chest freezers that said free food available? And it's like a, a freezer chest you'd find in a grocery store. Aldi sold us 12 of them for $50 a piece. God did that. Amen. Amen. Okay. Did, did you, do you remember the picture where you saw that big three-door glass door refrigerator that was in our lower lobby of the mission? We, we were praying for specifically a glass door unit so the families that we serve could see the food and could grab that food. The Lord prompted the hearts of a heating, ventilation, air conditioning company to come tour the mission. Uh, and they asked me, what is your greatest need? And we described that, and we prayed together, and then they sent me a picture of that unit that they had in storage. Their staff repaired it for free, and they delivered it for free to the mission. That's a $6,000 unit that God provided that has enabled us to be able to distribute between $500 and $1,000 worth of food per month out of our lobby. <laughs> Praise God. At Anoka Community Mission, we care for the 21st century equivalent of the orphan and the widow. Our child care center operates uh, as a privately subsidized, flat daily rate program that the mission supports. So tuition at Little Blessings only pays for the staff that care for the children. And actually, every other facet of the mission is entirely volunteer-led and operated. So if you are interested in being involved in organizing donations, uh, in washing dishes, did you see the cute little girl that was washing dishes in the kitchen? Okay, I'm a proud papa. That was my Rachel, okay? She, and, and don't worry, it's not child labor. She was volunteering, okay? <laughs> and daddy volunteers too. But Rachel can't wait to go to the mission, especially whenever Mary 
uh, who's, who's out in the congregation day. Whenever Mary is working, Rachel's like, can I go wash dishes with Mary? And it's just precious. But we do have opportunities to volunteer uh, in the various programs that I just described in the lower level of the mission. 9.30 in the morning to 11.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday. And again, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. There are also opportunities to volunteer in the child care center. Uh, but that requires a little bit more training and a little bit more in the area of background checks to make sure that we cross our T's. Uh, you know, we children are precious. And we love people, but uh, we, we want to be wise, we want to be careful, and make sure also that our volunteers are set up for success. Now, uh, I stood before this congregation and, and shared with you guys that we were praying concerning the needs with the roof and with the heating, ventilation, air conditioning situation in the mission building. And God provided uh, <laughs> amazingly and... Uh, 10,600 square feet of flat roof in the original part of the building, which is a 21,000 square foot building. It's an old charter school building. Before that, it was a racquetball court and fitness center. But that old section of the roof completely replaced, completely paid for. And um, the Holy Spirit, I think, mugged a few people that were involved in the HVAC industry. Uh, and we ended up being able to replace two of the rooftop uh, furnaces uh, as well. So we have brand new seven and a half ton Bryant rooftop furnaces uh, on, on the mission building. So we're, we're so, so thankful for that. I had uh, shared with you that, uh, you know, when we were praying concerning the freezer chests, uh, we also were praying, uh, Lord, we got to power them. Uh, we, we need the funds to power them. Our electric bill has gone up a little bit uh, in the past couple months, just to let you know. Well, at Tis So Sweet, I'm very thankful to share uh, that we were able to raise enough funds to be able to guarantee the powering of all of those units through the winter months. And we're very thankful for that. Um, our, our utilities bill is about $2,000 a month when you take into account the heating of the building and water and the electricity and the waste removal and everything. So we, we are praying for regular donors to contribute to that. And there are needs so that we can continue to operate and be able to store and distribute all of that food that comes in. Now, uh, a few months ago, uh, I believe I shared that I had an encounter with the Lord in my quiet time, and he stopped me and, and said, Jason, ask me for 10,000 cans of food. Okay? And I stopped, and I was like, Lord, where in the world am I going to put 10,000 cans of food at the mission? How are we going to store it? We have PVC shelving at the mission at that time. So can you imagine 10,000 cans? You have, you know, and it just collapses underneath the weight of all that, that food. Well, but in the midst of that, I kind of stopped and, and I, I said, Lord, I, I believe you can do this. Okay, you don't need to make me mute, have Angela have to carry a child, and me have to name him John, okay, to believe that you can do this. I believe that you can provide. I don't know how, but I believe you can provide, and I'm, I'm praying, and I'm going to, every day, I'm going to start asking for 10,000 cans of food, and is it okay if I start asking for the ability to store it? I got a yes. Not an audible voice, but in my heart, I, I definitely heard a yes. It was within weeks of praying that I had a divine appointment with a leader uh, in the Aldi executive leadership uh, at one of the stores, and the store was getting remodeled. And I said, hey, if you, if you end up with any shelving you're going to throw out, um, let me know, because we could use it at the mission. We're praying for 10,000 cans of food to be able to feed families and distribute to families in need. And she grabbed me and said, do you want all of it? Two stores. And now I'm walking out saying, Lord, how am I going to transport all that? <laughs> and a divine appointment with the owner of North Star Towing resulted in North Star offering two flatbeds on two separate dates to transport all the shelving. 
And did you see the pictures of all the heavy duty shelving? That's just one room of it. We got a whole nother room that God provided. And I have to confess that I, I do have a obsessive compulsive sterilite tote disorder. Um, and they have to be identical because it's the only way that they all stack into one another right. Uh, so we've given away a lot of totes that don't match and, and we found a system that works well. God has blessed and opened doors and provided. And we already got a thousand dollar check for canned foods. And County Market in Andover came on board to sell us the canned goods at as close to cost as possible. That's already 2,000 cans of food. Don't we serve a great God who's faithful and cares for the orphan and the widow? Um, so we're praying for the last $4,000 to come in. So we know we've got 10,000 cans covered. Uh, but there are collection drives that are happening in churches and in businesses all over. It's through November 18th. Uh, and we're collecting canned vegetables, canned fruits, and canned soups. Uh, there are some totes that are right out in the lobby. And we would just invite you to be a part of that. We'd invite you to partner with us. Uh, I would be honored to give you a tour and show you what's happening at the mission and the future of where God is leading. And my friends, we have the ability in that building to add a second level in that 4,000 square foot gymnasium, configure it with beds upstairs, configure it for a cafeteria and a kitchen in the lower level of the building. God's already provided the cafeteria tables. Oh, and the fact that the four freezer chests are now operating in Joseph's pantry, now we got to figure out how to divert all that heat into the big gymnasium next door. And God prompted the hearts of uh, my friend Jim at Liberty Comfort Systems, and they're, they're going to tackle that for us so we can heat the gym with the freezer chest that were provided for us to store the food. Isn't that cool? How God can do that? But what I am praying for and what I am believing is that the great God that we serve, that he can provide a way for us to be able to offer 24-hour child care Monday through Friday at a dollar an hour. Will you join me in that prayer? Will you believe with me that our great God that sent his one and only son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be born as a little baby in Bethlehem, to live a perfect life, to die the death of a criminal on a cross, to pay the penalty for the sins of mankind, to be laid into a tomb and to rise again on the third day and to offer salvation through faith in him. That our great God is exceedingly and abundantly able beyond anything that we could ever imagine to do great things for his glory to minister to the needs of the least of these. Will you believe with me in that? So I want to thank you for your prayers, for your partnership, for your support. Uh, and I want to give God all the glory. Uh, can we pray and then I'll, I'll hand the mic back to Daniel? Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your great love. We thank you for a day to gather together in rest and worship. Yeshua, we thank you. You are our risen Savior. You are amazing. And we want you to be honored and glorified uh, at the mission and everything that we do in, in providing for the essential needs for those who desperately need hope. Because that hope can only come from you. By entering into a personal relationship with you. By humbly coming before you and asking for forgiveness for our sin. Believing that you died on the cross to pay the penalty for that sin. That you rose again on the third day. So that all who put their faith in you and invite you into their lives to be Savior and Lord will find salvation and eternal life. Yeshua, you are a great God. You are the wonderful counselor. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You care for the least of these. 
Thank you for the work that you have done at the mission. Thank you for the work that you have done at Corner Fringe. Thank you for what you're going to do. And we give you glory. And we pray all this, Yeshua, in your mighty name. Amen.